Good morning, church. It's good to be here. Um, I believe I'll be bringing the word of God to you this morning, and I believe the Lord has laid a word on my heart for the church. But before I go ahead to share, I want to say thank you, EP family, for pastors at birthday appreciation this week. <laughs> this is, I'm celebrating you, so please celebrate yourself properly. <laughs> We want to say thank you for celebrating with us, and we just want to say thank you for, for your gift, for your generosity, and for all that you do. We really appreciate you. And some people have been waiting for pastor to wear that creed. I've, always, I also, I've also been waiting for him to open it so I can help him, you know, just sample and test it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hallelujah. Back into the word. I'm privileged today to be ending our seasons on times times and seasons? Yeah, times and seasons. And I believe the Lord today would like me to share the title, Seasons of Waiting. I've heard a lot of titles, the waiting season, the season of waiting. But God said to me specifically, seasons of waiting. I'm conscious I have a very short time, so I'm going to read through my notes so that I can stay with the script, okay? So seasons of waiting. Why seasons of waiting? Because the waiting season isn't a one-off experience. It's not just a one-time experience. I'm sorry to say if you think, I had a waiting season. I was waiting for a new job and I've got the job. My waiting season is over. Hallelujah. Praise God, somebody. No, <laughs> it's not over. Another one is coming. <laughs> The waiting season isn't a one-off season. God has designed every life season we pass through to entail a waiting process. Okay? Every season you like, you plant. That's why we read that scripture. As long as the world exists, there will be times of planting and a time of harvest. But the time between the planting and the harvest what we've waited for has come to pass. There's the time before we come and share that testimony, my brethren, my brothers and sisters, is a season of waiting. Andrea can tell you. We waited together, by the way. <laughs> Just in serious language. And those seasons in Sister Tunde's office, I'm sure there are waiting seasons where she wakes up in the morning and thinking, what am I going to face today? So I don't know what season you are in or what waiting season you're in. I think today the Lord will let me, allow me to just explain to you what the waiting season means. So you're not just using the time I'm waiting. And when you're not just, when you're not waiting, when you're waiting on yourself and not waiting on God. God uses the waiting season to birth a promise. So today I want to open your mind to understand God's principles and purpose for your waiting season. So you can yield a fruitful life, not a wasteful life, by consciously growing and not groaning through your seasons. Tell somebody, pay attention to your season. Turn to the next person because this is really, I need them to hear it. Pay attention to your season, right? Yeah, yeah. Pay attention to your season. You see, God using the waiting season to build your faith. It's all about your purpose. <laughs> you think the waiting season is about getting the promise? No. What God used the waiting season for is to build your faith, which is to connect you back to God. So every season you go through, every time of sowing seed, every time of planting, God's intention is to bless you regardless. That is undebatable. But the season, there's a process which requires waiting and God's intent for that season to be a season of building and building your faith. Every season is a journey of faith that God uses to build you up and draw you closer to him. The enemy, I need you to listen to this very carefully and understand. The enemy does not want your marriage. <laughs> Are you surprised? He does not want your money. He does not want your child. Your hopes and dreams, the dream husband, the dream house, the dream job. You think that's what the devil is after? No. All that is taken care of. 
What he really wants is your faith. So when the enemy can wait for you in the times of waiting and make you lose your faith, that's when he has won. The Bible talks about the enemy going prowling around looking for whom to devour. Your faith in God unlocks his blessings. So he knows that your faith is so powerful. Your faith is so strong. Your faith is a power that God uses to destroy the kingdom of the enemy. So that's what really the enemy is looking to attack. I was going to make an illustration of the waiting season, of the waiting process. And I was going to use the illustration of a Domino's pizza tracker. Have you got that Domino's <laughs> tracker on there for me? I wanted you to use this illustration to tell you that when you, when you are waiting, what, there's a process that happens at that time. Okay, maybe I don't have it there. Thank you. Do I have it or no? It's not there. Okay, so maybe I missed it. I wanted to show you this tracker because when you replace a pizza holder in our household, we are very excited to place an order. Tell me what kind of order in terms of needs you need. What do you pray for? What are the kind of things we pray for? We probably pray for job. We probably pray for husband, wife, children, healing, breakthrough, elevation. But I want to take you to John chapter 14, verse 13. He says, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So when you're placing your order at Domino's Pizza, at Papa Jones, you know that within 45 minutes, an hour, or depending on what you place, that that order will be delivered. Is that correct? So... The same way God is saying that I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified. Let me take you back a little bit. When you are placing an order, you are going, are you going by your own menu? Even though they say to you, customize your pizza. But you, they, you don't put in your own ingredient, do you? They've already give you an ingredient list. They've already tell you what you can take from to customize your pizza. So he is saying, they're saying to you, this is what we can provide for you. As long as you order within this menu, you will get it. And so many of us, we want to order from God what is not on his menu. <laughs> and then we say, we are waiting on God to deliver his promise. And God, you're saying, you're not waiting on me. Because that's not my plan for you. If this is the only thing I'm going to be able to impact into your life this morning... That when you ask of God, he says, whatever you ask in my name, we always miss that part. So that the Father may be glorified. God wants to take us to a place where our desires, our needs, whatever we are asking is aligned to his will. It's aligned to his purpose and is bringing glory to the Father. And he's saying you can be guaranteed you can be guaranteed and be assured that he shall do for you. We enter the waiting season at the point when our request, okay, listen to this. You get into the waiting season at the point that our request and desires aligns with God's will. That is really when you're waiting on God. And it's interesting because when we place an order, we place an order with so much expectation. I'm going to use my kids as an example. They're so excited. Mom is ordering pizza. Yay. I want, um, which one? This ice cream. Black and Jerry or Tom and Jerry. Ben and Jerry's. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, they are so excited. I'm going to have cookies. I'm going to have all of this fancy pizza. And then, especially the older one, comes in 10 minutes after. Mom. Have you ordered the pizza? I have. See, here's the tracker. I, I'm, I'm sorry I missed my tracker. Anyway, and I've ordered the pizza. And she feels like, ah, it's taking long. It's only five minutes ago, isn't it? Do, do you feel like that? Do you get that, moms? And, and she gets to that point, 20 minutes. Oh, I don't think this pizza is coming early. I'm really starving. That's when you suddenly start starving. 
and start feeling very hungry. And then you know what happens? The enemy comes in to sow tears of discouragement. You've asked according to his will. God wants you to trust the process. That, oh, find that piece of tracker for me somewhere online if you can, but if you can, no problem. God, there's a process. It tells you preparing your order, right? It says it baking, it's in the oven. And you can, you know it's gonna be delivered. You know it's been baked. But there's just something that's saying you can't can't wait for this. Maybe I should just have some cereal right now and just wait. And then the pizza comes and you can't eat it anyway. But that moment you're like, I can't really wait. But God is saying to tell me to do that, do you trust the process? Once you ask in my name. And what you're asking is align and give glory to God. You can trust me with the process. You can trust me with the process that it will be delivered in due time. It will be delivered in due time because God makes all things beautiful in his time. And we forget that there is a due time for individuals. We forget that it's a time peculiar to you. And there's a time... That he's peculiar to your assignment. At 16, I've shared this before. I believe the Lord asked me. I, I felt this. I, it was like I was back to the, to, my, to the play, to the heart of God. I reconnected back to God and I said, being a Christian is not going to be about my father's religion, but about me knowing God for who he is. And I believe the spirit of the Lord asked me to be praying for my husband. I knew I prayed <laughs> I prayed according to the will of God and I laid it there. It did not show up until six years later. Would you say because I met him at 22, I wasn't waiting? I was not a waiting single. Is that what you'd call it? Because you did, because I didn't get married at 30, or I didn't get married at 35, that I didn't wait. No, I waited for six years for you. <laughs> My waiting season began when I said, Lord, the man after your own heart, wherever he is, if he has not known you, Lord, let him meet with you. When I asked him when he rededicated his life back to God, it was that year when I prayed that prayer. And I waited for the manifestation. I was able to sit on God's word, trust his process, because my prayers were aligned with the desires and the will of God. Whatever you are asking for today, I want to begin to round up. Whatever it is that you desire from him, don't waste your season. Don't waste your season asking God for things that do not glorify the Father. God wants you to live a life that pleases him. God wants you to live a life that is aligned with him. There, because times will come. There's a test of time. I say to ladies who are engaged, what word has God given to you? Because I can tell you the storms will come. The winds will blow. But what are you going to stand on when that time comes? God will see you through your waiting season. I don't have time to go into that waiting season, but maybe another time. Because I have a content that I wanted to deliver to you. But I believe God has said, I've said today what I believe God wants you to hear today. And it is that your faith, your faith should not waver. When storms comes, when trials comes, when it feels as if things are not happening, God wants you to trust the process. God wants you to trust his hands. God wants you to trust that he is working things out on your behalf. And I want to tell you today, tell someone today that times will come, people will come to test you. Things will come to test that promise. You will want to lower your standard. You will want to have a double standard. Sometimes you may want to help God like having cereal when waiting for Peter to arrive. But I want to encourage you today that when that time comes, I want you to do three things. Renew your mind by the, with the word of God. Present your prayers, your anxieties, your cries to God in the place of prayer. And three, walk in partnership with the Holy Spirit. 
One more time, I'll go over that. When those times comes, when those tests comes, when it, uh, it feels as if it's not coming or it's not happening, and you are sure that God has said this to you, don't forget we're talking about promises that God has given to you, not the desires that you are fancying. So your first place of call is to align yourself with God. Is to align yourself, be eating so much in God. I used to say that to, to ladies that I meet, that it would take that devil to find you. They will have to go through God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit before they can reach you, and they can't. So let your life be so eaten in God. Let your life be so embedded in God. Flee from sin. Sexual immoralities. Lying. Whatever it is. Covetousness. Whatever it is. Stay away and get your life in order. The word I'm bringing to you today is a message of faith. And God wants me to say to someone today. Get your life in order. Because when your life is hidden in God. When your life is hidden in Christ, you can stand confidently and say, whatsoever I ask in my name, in the name of Jesus, he will do for me. Go with tarries, I will wait for it because the Lord makes all things beautiful in times. No matter what comes my way, my life is in his hands. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Rise up on your feet this afternoon. Rise up on your feet this afternoon. Thank you, Jesus. When the enemy comes to sow tears and sow, 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 sow lies to you, I don't know who it is that is hearing the lies of the enemy and the narratives that the Lord has not given to you. What picture has God given to you about your life? What promises are you standing on? Or are you waiting for someone to tell you? Today the Lord wants you to get into the word because it is the word that will sustain you when the storms of life come. God wants me to tell you that be anxious for nothing but in prayers and supplication. Let your request be made known to God. He says, come to me and remind me of the things I've promised you. I'm telling some of the lies the enemy is telling you does God really love me does God even answer my prayers does God even remembers me those are lies of the enemy and I want to encourage someone today you don't have to worry and you don't have to be afraid joy comes in the morning troubles they won't last always as long as you are in his will for there's a friend named Jesus he will wipe your tears away he will wipe your tears away. Just raise your hands to him today. I want to want you to begin to take to pray and say, Lord Jesus, restore me back to you. Restore me back to you, Lord Jesus. Restore my faith and help my faith to be stronger and renewed daily. Cause me to be to go back to the place of the word, to break place of the place of prayer. Let your Holy Spirit do its work afresh in me. Father, we put our life is in your hand. We put our life into your hands. We come back to the place right where we belong. Right in your presence. Right in the presence of the Father. So Father, I pray for as many as have fallen off. Fallen off your will. Falling off your purpose. Wasting away, waiting and crying whilst you have not put them there. Father, I pray today that you will bring each and every one of us back to the place where you desire, back to the faith of the true and authentic faith where we begin to walk and pattern our life according to your ordinances. And so, Father, I want to pray for as many today that you have given a word, that you have given a promise and that what you have said concerning each and every one of us in this place, from the youngest to the oldest, I, whatever what you have said to us, I don't know what word the Lord has said to you. I don't know what promises the Lord has given to you. I pray and agree together with you that no matter 
what comes your way. Today, you will be going confident that your life is in His hands. That no matter what comes your way, He will hold you. He will keep you because He that keeps watch over in Israel, He neither sleeps nor slumber. I pray the Lord bless you today. May the Lord keep you and cause His face to shine upon you. As you go forth into this week, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will go forth in joy. You will be led in gladness. In the name of Jesus, I say, plant light shall fall before you in pleasant places. In the name of Jesus, that you will hear a voice before you, leading you, guiding you. You will not walk in darkness. You will walk in light as you go forth. In the name of Jesus.